Hello there, I'm Dave Allen, I'm good and geeky. Let's talk about two-factor authentication. Two-factor authentication is good, but what level of two-factor authentication do you actually need? There are different levels, so we could have the places where you sign into the account and it will push out a time-limited code, and that come either to your phone or as an email, and it'll come through a messaging service possibly, or it could even go to another device which you're logged into on the same account. Now, it does offer some extra security over the top of having just a username and password, but if someone has stolen your phone and they've got into your phone and they get access to that, then they're going to have access to that two-factor authentication, so it's not going to be enough. It's a little bit too easy with regard to the man in the middle attack or a thief just nicking your phone. The next level of two-factor authentication protection will be a separate authentication application. You can put a password or a PIN code which is different from your device login password. Makes sense to keep people out of that application. Or you could just have it open up when you're using face recognition or other biometrics such as your fingerprint, which you should have been doing with your phone in any case. So if someone steals your phone, they would need to know the password to your authenticator app, which you have obviously going to set different to the pin code for your phone. So if someone was shoulder surfing when you're at a bar or someplace and they saw you enter your password into your phone, your important accounts are still going to have that other level of protection. By the way, have a look at the video I made recently where you can use screen time to add extra protection to your iCloud Apple ID. Set that up with a different password and um, they can't get in and change the password, they can't get in and sort of do whatever else and lock you out of your account. The iCloud account is the key to the Kingdom account, so you've got to keep it secure. There are a number of authentication applications like the Google Authenticator, but I prefer to use the one called Authy. You can use 1Password, the password manager, to give you these time-based codes. And so long as you've properly protected that with, again, a different password from what you use to log into your iPhone or whatever device, then you're going to be okay. If it's set up properly, you'll be fine. It's a good enough for most people. Although I think it's probably a good idea to use something like an author, uh, one application for your passwords and another application for your two-factor. The next level of two-factor authentication is to use a hardware key like a Yubico key. There are trust keys and Thetis keys as other options. You get a Yubico Authenticator, which will give you those time-based keys, but only if you're plugged in or you use NFC to unlock the application. And I highly recommend using one of these keys for your Keys to the Kingdom accounts, like your Apple ID, your email accounts, your bank accounts. Yeah, something like that. You've got to look after it because otherwise people are going to get in and lock you out of your accounts and then they'll steal everything from you, including your memories from all your photos that you got on iCloud and whatever else. Okay, so let's have a look and see how actually you use these Yubico keys. Let's get the authenticator up in front of us, and there we go, authenticator. And what you have to do is you have to pull down this here to be able to get it to scan the Yubico key. And that's scanned, and now it's showing the passwords. So that's the easy way to do that. Also, what I can do is I can go into configuration, and in configuration with NFC settings, I can set it so that it will initiate NFC at application start, which is kind of cool. So let's do that, let's close that. So let's close the application now. Okay, so let's go to the authenticator, let's tap on that there, and it's ready to scan straight away. So I put the key up there, and we're in business. So I have another key here, which is the uh, 5CI, and this one here has got the lightning on one side of it, and on the other side of it has got the USB-C. And so the, the authenticator is ready to scan with that. Let's cancel that for the moment. Or I can just put in the lightning key, and I'll go straight in there, and on this key I've got a few more uh, accounts already set up. Of this one here, I've got one where you've got to touch the key to be able to make it work, so I click on that, tap that, touch the Yubico key, and it shows me the password. And it's counted down, and it's got to the end, and it's put up a new number for us. If I take this one out, and we'll go to the uh, NFC one again. So let's um, pull that down, scan the USB key. Now when this counts down and it gets to the end of it, it's not going to uh, change the uh, numbers on those codes. Let's get to the end there, 
And as you see, it's left them the same as they were. So if you want to get the uh, numbers up again or a new set of numbers up, you have to scan the key, the key again and then put that there behind and scan it. I've got those codes back up again. So as you can see, it's pretty easy to use this Yubico Authenticator application to get your one-time over-the-air passwords to be able to log into your accounts. I think it's probably slightly easier using this one here with the lightning key. What I like about using Authia 1Password for two-factor authentication codes is that they're synchronized across devices and there's no limit to the number of two-factor authentication codes you can set up in the application. This is in contrast to Yubico Authenticator which you can only set up one key at a time and it doesn't synchronize across and you can only have up to 32 accounts on one key. Also you have to set these up per Yubico key so it's going to be more work to set them up but it's going to be more secure. I've also found that some accounts only allow one authentication key and it's necessary or highly desirable to have duplicates of your Yubico key just in case you lose one. So if the site only allows one hardware key, make sure that you've got another method of getting in as a backup. This could be a list of one-time keys you've printed and you've kept safe somewhere along with that spare Yubico key and it could be um, another different um, authentication app. I've got three Yubico keys now. One key is kept in a safe place and it's the backup key. Two of the keys work with USB-A and NFC and the newest one of course works on USB-C and Lightning. So I can plug that one into the phone and also to the iPad which is kind of nice. I've kind of covered all the bases there although I'm tempted to get another one which is USB-C and NFC. I'll have to think about it to see what I'm going to do about it. When you set up a new account with your Yubico keys you have to do all the keys at the same time. So go get the backup key from the same place and do that one too. By the way, Apple will not let you set up hardware 2FA keys unless you have two keys. So bear in mind when you're buying your first key, you're going to have to buy two of them, okay? So decide what your level of risk is for whatever you do and use the protection that you think is necessary. Some people like going to bars where people can easily look over your shoulder might want to consider getting a burner phone and it's only going to have your basic stuff in there for making phone calls for a taxi or whatever else and maybe some messages but it won't get contacts into Apple IDs, uh, email accounts or whatever else and you're going to be safe. So have a think about that and tell me what you think in the comments below. Quite often I get an email sent to me which says uh, you're trying to access your account and change the password and I haven't been anywhere near it so I know someone else is trying to do it they might have even managed to get my password or maybe they're trying to do it with the key log or, or I don't know what they're trying to do but they haven't got in and because I didn't reply to that email and start putting in the details they're not going to get in and also I've got two-factor authentication on there so even if they did get my password they're not going to get in. So this is Dave Allen, good and geeky and two-factored up to the eyeballs. Bye bye now, talk to you again soon.